Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Chemistry Essentials video 51. It's on calorimetry. And like anything in chemistry, a lot of this can go back to Antoine Lavoisier, um, that brilliant chemist who started a lot of modern chemistry. And so calorimetry, if we just break down that word, it means the measuring of heat. And the first calorimeter that was created by Lavoisier was an ice calorimeter. And basically what you had was a chamber that had ice on the inside, and then an insulating chamber of ice around the outside of that. And then you would put something inside the calorimeter, a candle for example, and what would happen is it would generate heat as it's doing combustion. It would melt the ice around it, that ice would turn into a liquid which he could measure. So you could measure the amount of energy that's being released from the candle. He then put something living inside there. He used a guinea pig to start and what he found is that it occurred in the same way in other words that guinea pig is doing respiration which is a form of combustion it's using oxygen it's releasing heat and he showed that this is essentially the same kind of a process it requires oxygen gives off carbon dioxide and so what he's really looking at is the energy given off by this system and so a calorimeter is pretty simple it only has two parts it has a heat bath around the outside and that generally is made of water because we know specifically how water changes over time. And then you're going to have a chemical system that's placed inside of that. We need a thermometer inside that heat bath so we can measure what's happening as we get changes of energy within it. And so we can measure energy change from that chemical system. And we could use this to measure everything we described in the last video. The specific heat capacity, the enthalpy of fusion and vaporization, and also the enthalpy of the reaction. And so let's start with water. Imagine that we have a beaker of water and we're adding energy to that. Remember we measure how easily it's heated or cooled using uh, a measurement called specific heat. And so if we break down that equation, specific heat is equal to the quantity of heat transferred, and we're going to measure that in joules, divided by the grams of the substance, in other words how much we have, times the temperature change. And so let's give you a real example because we know specifically what the specific heat is of water. It's 4.18 joules per gram Kelvin. And that's been well established. It's going to be important that we understand that as we start to do some calculations related to calorimetry. And so imagine we have 250 milliliters of water. Now what's interesting about water is we know immediately that we have 250 grams of water and we started at 18 degrees Celsius and so our mass is 250 grams and our initial temperature is going to be 18 degrees Celsius and let's say we heat it up and so over time it changes and at the end it's 65 degrees Celsius and so our final um, uh, our T sub F is going to be 65 degrees Celsius and so what we can do is figure out how much energy was added to that water and we're going to use specific heat to do it again specific heat is equal to the quantity of heat transferred divided by the grams times the temperature change and so let's just start working down these values right here well we know specific heat of water is going to be 4.18 we now know what the mass is, that's 250 grams, so I'm just going to plug that in right here. Um, we also know the temperature change, so we're going from 18 to 65, and so we just take our final temperature minus our initial, and so that's going to be 65 minus 18, that's going to be 47 degrees Celsius. We do some simple algebra, in other words I'm just going to multiply both sides by this, and so I'm going to move it to there, and now I just simplify and I'm going to find that the quantity of heat that was transferred is 4.91 times 10 to the fourth joules. And so where did that energy come from? It came from the heating of that water. And so if we know how much the water changes in its temperature and we know its mass, then we can figure out how much energy is released. And that's really how a calorimeter works. All you have is you're going to have a, a, a vessel where we're going to have that reaction or that heating or that phase change occur. And then we're just going to have it sitting inside this heat bath. We can measure the changes in temperature. And by measuring the changes in temperature of the water, you know how much energy is being released from that vessel or being consumed by that vessel. And so if we heat up that material in there, let's say it's a chemical reaction, and we see changes in the temperature, we know how much of that is coming from the reaction inside that vessel. And so this is what an actual, this would be a bomb calorimeter, and what it's doing is we're putting whatever we want to study inside this vessel, we're enclosing it inside water, we have a really detailed thermometer on the inside, lots of times they'll have a stirrer so that we're moving that water around and we can measure energy changes. We could use, your, use that to measure specific heat capacity, enthalpy of fusion, that's when we're going, remember, from a solid to a liquid or backwards. We can measure enthalpy of vaporization as we're going from a liquid to a gas.
gas, or we can just measure that enthalpy of reaction. We can measure endothermic and exothermic reactions. And so that's the role of a, of a calorimeter. And so could you design or interpret the results of an experiment? Again, what we're looking at is changes in the water, and then we can work backwards to figure out how are those changes coming from that vessel, and I hope that was helpful.